Welcome to the Epic Man Podcast, where we let our curiosities and theories run wild and sometimes talk relevant news. I'm Josiah, and with me, my two friends and co-host, Ben and Mike. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. Welcome back, boys. Welcome I, back. You guys ready for a you, spicy uh, time? Why don't you pull the throttle back on that Michael bull crap? Michael? Um, I'm very appreciative. I'm that. looking at a picture currently. Of the Horseshoe Harbor in Kiwina, Kiwina, and it looks photoshopped. Like it looks like any. I don't know any of those words that you just said right there. It's okay. I'm looking. (laughs) Basically, I'm looking at a picture of a harbor, and it looks like the rocks on the side are like floating off of the water because of the way the picture is taken. Why? I don't know. It's just that's I. I'm seeing this, and it's confusing (laughs) me, and I don't like it. All I'm looking at is uh some some beautiful faces here ah with, obviously uh, can't be mine who with, are you looking at right now with, no you and mike both oh, of you okay, both of you have beautiful faces i mean honestly right now my lighting is trash so i just look like a freaking white <laughs> angel that is true yeah. um well you all well, hey, look like you're guys, dead you also look like a pale ghost because uh, i am a pale hey, ghost by the time this episode airs <laughs> yes you know what month it'll be right october October, October, which means what is October? We need to have an Oktoberfest. Spooky season. Oktoberfest. In October, we are cracking down. No, not Oktoberfest. We're just yeah, we just drink. Let's have an Oktoberfest, but with a K in October instead of a C because it looks cool. And does it really look cool, or does it just look stupid? It's it's German. Lots of bonfires. German. (laughs) No. 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 I love bonfires, so let's please have a lot of them. I would love to. Honestly, where you're moving right now would be probably a great place for a bonfire. Yeah. Out I don't yeah, out in the middle of nowhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want it sucks for everything else except for bonfires. I don't wanna the bonfires will be good, but dude, else. the bonfires out in the middle of nowhere, legit. Everything else, <laughs> nah, I can do without it. I don't um yeah, no. Might even Bonfires. find a dog man out there or something, you know? Uh, Freaking hey. werewolves, probably. In light of the howl moon. I mean full yeah. moon. What? That'd be crazy. Howl moon? The howl. <laughs> You have something to tell us? Is it a full moon or a howl moon? Uh, Well, I howl at the moon when it's full. So, interesting. Howl, really? Hmm. Yeah. But that's the thing. Mm. You guys don't need to know that story. I thought I saw some, uh, I thought I saw like some uh, fur sticking out of your teeth there a little bit ago. Oh, dude, I could show you some fur. Uh, (laughs) I feel like you're too nice to be an actual wolf, Ben. Have you seen my canines? Ben, Ben would be like a Twilight vampire. Or something. I feel like Edward. Yeah. Sparkles. Dude, I basically am a vampire. Like, I literally am like a vampire <laughs> if I was immortal and could move really fast. <laughs> so I I think I've told you this before, but I play um uh a tabletop game with a couple of buddies called Werewolf. We mm-hmm. haven't played it yep. in a little while, but yeah, um in in Werewolf, it's in the same universe, it's called the world of darkness, the whole universe, and it's set in the same universe as Vampire the Masquerade. And I think Ben would love vampire the masquerade because it is all about being a vampire and like social stuff and like just being extra and vampires and shit the werewolves like hate vampires and their nickname for them is leeches that's and classic that's great i, I kind of love it i don't know i just i love it because leeches i'm, I'm gonna start calling ben a leech yeah. wow it's <laughs> not, not what you're supposed to do you need to be a werewolf because ben sucks all the time <laughs> He wow. just sucks everything. <laughs> wow. Like, I am so anytime, sad. anytime Ben just sees any well, thing, like my favorite thing sticking is, out, he just <laughs> right now because of Ben mentioning the lighting, he's practically glowing on yeah, 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 So yeah. like if he just had like what we need to do is get glitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben, if we get some glitter on you, dude, like some glittery makeup. I'll literally look like I'm I, it'll be about as good visual effects as the first Twilight movie. Yeah. Well, it because makes me really sad because Ben is actually anti werewolf. I'm not anti werewolf. What? Well, you're 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 like a you're more on the vampire side. I'm what? not. I'm not pro vampire. I I honestly I uh, freaking hate them both. But you hate what? Wa- you hate both werewolves and vampires. Yes. What? <laughs> what? Why do you hate werewolves? What? Tell me. Tell me why you hate werewolves. Werewolves are just kind of like dumb, hairy wolfmen, and vampires oh, are just kind of stupid. Wrong. Oh my goodness! Did you think, Did you think that only... vampires are stupid? Yeah. Not a fan. What? 
Like, if you think werewolves are just the only, the only like like savages, that's incorrect. You just have. I I said they're werewolves. dumb, hairy dogmen. I never said they were savages. I mean, animal like dogs are not just inherently werewolves dumb. are people too. Dogs and wolves are not inherently dumb. They're actually very intelligent animals. Yeah, they are extremely intelligent. Yeah. So why would they be dumb just because they're like? I said humans? they're dumb, not as in intelligence. I'm saying they're dumb as in I just don't care about them. Oh, so anything you don't care about is dumb. Yeah. Wow. Like giants and stuff. African giants. Tall people. <laughs> Cringe. African giants? What? <laughs> what? It really sounded like you just said African giants. I said freaking giants. It's a good save there. Um, Because you can I always conflate the two and it's hard yeah, to know. Huh. If you said African giants or freaking giants, you know? It's really hard. It's hard to know. I gotta, You're stretching. I, I just you're, assume, you're stretching real assume, far. I'm not stretching anything, Ben. <sighs> but hey, if you got a thing against African giants, you're okay. stretching something. No, no, nope. I got I wow. just giants, werewolves, vampires, really black tall them. people. Ben does not like black really tall stretching people. that white privilege, man. Just <laughs> <sighs> um, I always played as a werewolf right in Skyrim. Over oh no. yes so i'm gonna be honest here i'm gonna go on record the werewolves in skyrim suck assholes what mm-hmm. but but not if you level it up all the way i got a mod for it that made it so much better because they if, regenerate health you can do that anyway no you have to feed on bodies to regenerate health yeah yeah no and, no, and that's fun be regenerating health that's fun you get to eat people no you can eat people as a werewolf but you should be regenerating it's not hard to eat people as a werewolf in skyrim you just Listen, attack them and you should be inherently them. regenerating health as a werewolf because you're better than everything else you're an I, apex predator i mean if that's the only faster. thing that apparently made it better than wow no there's a bunch of stuff that made it better like you can actually pick stuff up and like live as a werewolf and like walk around as a werewolf all the time instead of being like a mindless beast i just didn't like the mindless beast thing i just thought huh. it was a little mike likes to be know? a mindless beast no, I literally mm. just said the opposite. In fact, Mike doesn't like mindless beasts. I, no, mm. I never said that either. I just said I don't want to be a mindless. Beast. I bet you Mike likes dolphins. Well, what, what do you have against maybe, dolphins? Maybe maybe Mike wants to be a were dolphin. Oh, I don't want to be a were dolphin. Why wouldn't you? Time. Why wouldn't you well, want to be a were? Because I'd have there. to live in the water with tiger sharks. Yeah, freaking tiger <laughs> sharks are lit. Those things are super dangerous. What if you're lit. a were tiger shark? <laughs> yes dude that'd you know be like I'd, a freaking you know what i'd want to be in the water i'd want to be a killer whale because apparently they are like the top of the food chain in the water they're because yeah, awesome. they're freaking evil yeah they're like they figured out that they could like they attack sharks because they found out that if they hit sharks hard enough they can make them flip upside down so like killer whales will like run up on a shark and just bop it with its toes ah. so it flips upside down and then it just stays there and then it dies and they just watch it they don't even eat it they just watch it do that amazing yeah, they, they'll go out of their way to, like, find seal or uh, penguins and then, like, smack the penguins in the air with their tails. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they smack the penguins hard enough that their skin rips off of their body and they'll, like, walk around with, like, Holy skin crap. in their teeth and stuff, too. Yeah. So, basically, you want to be a were- were-killer whale. I'd be down for that. <laughs> Try saying that five times fast. <laughs> in that a same game, killer. there were-killer are whale, were-killer 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 whale. Well, you know what you can say five times fast though? Werewolf. Werewolf, 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 werewolf. I didn't just say it five times fast every time. Vampire, vampire, vampire. What's interesting is that here in Michigan, we actually have our own little legend about a werewolf. Well, you live in Michigan? We all live in Michigan. We've talked about this before in earlier episodes of the podcast. We've we've talked about this a lot. Awesome. (laughs) I understand. We just have not specifically said where in Michigan we live. Well, yeah, yeah. I hope not. Freaking, I don't want people to hunt me down. Well, trying to they, kill they me. know that we live in West Michigan area, but that's fine. That's in the fine. West Michigan area, but that's a pretty broad area. Yeah, you know, it's a general big stroke. Just, old just crusty, old stroke. Nice. Just don't come to Grand Haven or Holland. <laughs> so, um, what's what's uh, this thing about the dogman then, Mike? Yeah. Well, I don't know, about why don't you tell man? me about the dogman, Josiah? Yeah, Josiah. Well, <laughs> tell us about the dog. You no, tell us um, about your special little no, dogman. We Why actually like some. I have a personal story about a dogman. Oh but... snap! Well, I can't wait to hear that. But so, um, this is actually from Traverse City. There are still articles being written about this thing. Apparently, the Michigan dogman has been around and mm-hmm. been like 
part of Legend since the it looked like the eighties. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been around Legends, for a while. The Michigan Dogman appears in ten year cycles that f- that falls on years ending in seven. Sightings have been reported in several locations throughout Michigan, primarily in the northwestern quadrant of the Lower Peninsula. 1987, the legend of the Michigan Dogman gained popularity when disc jockey mm-hmm. Steve Cook recorded a song about the creature and its reported sightings. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's said it's said to have been stalking the Manistee River since the days when the Ottawa tri- tribe still lived there. Hmm. Um, authentic sources for sightings made prior to 1987, however, have never been documented beyond <laughs> Steve Cook's song discussed below. The first alleged encounter of the Michigan Dogman occurred in 1887 in Wexford County when two lumberjacks saw a creature with they described as having a man's body and a dog's head. Wow. Yep. In that 1937 sounds, in huh? Paris, Michigan, Robert Fortney uh, was attacked by five wild dogs and said that one of the five dogs walked on two legs. Reports of similar creatures also came from Allen and Co- Allegan County in the 1950s and in Manistee and Cross Village in 1967. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's kind of crazy because there are even like reports from like uh, lumberjacks in like the 1800s who have accounts about the dogman and stuff in Michigan. That's crazy. What do you What do you do with that? You know? Yeah. Yeah. But this is like a consistent thing. Yeah. Which is crazy. Mm. Um, I was oh, looking at pictures of the Michigan dog man. Yeah, and the pictures that people apparently have gotten, yeah, look a lot like um a, a black bear. Really? Mm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> interesting. Very interesting. Um, just from just from its shape and stuff. Huh. These like blurry I mean, photos from like trail cams and stuff. Right. But and, and I think that a bear could like you know be easily mistaken as something like that. Or like right. distorted footage or whatever but it also could be um you know we also have cougars in this area too yeah um so i think that, a, i think a bear is i mean a bear can like stand on a tiny lug, legs and stuff right too, it can so. be bipedal yeah so yeah i think yeah. but it's interesting these these like arts and illustrations or whatever are really interesting yeah um yeah and i was looking at this doesn't have to do with michigan per se but um, I was reading an article about this, like back in 2018, of this like wolf-like animal that was shot on private property in Denton, uh, Montana, mm-hmm. and uh, wildlife biologists still have not really been able to clearly identify its species or subtype. Hmm. Wow, it's like a, it looks almost like a dire wolf. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. It's just uh, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. So um, I know someone who. Said that he was uh, being followed by the dog man once. Oh, really? Um, yeah, he like stopped by. He it was actually he he hit a deer on the side of the road, and when he got out and went to go like check on the deer and stuff, there he said that there was like these like eyes they could see from like the headlights that were watching him and stuff, and uh-huh. then he like kind of was freaking out, so he started to like walk back to his car, and the eyes were like coming closer and stuff and he could he said that when he got into his car and looked up and stuff he saw like a like a a weird like dog like creature that wasn't like a wolf or a coyote that was kind of like walking on its hind legs off the side of the road and stuff when it got into his car yeah where is where did he live <laughs> uh he oh, lived nine. around i mean he lived around where where we live and stuff so oh really yeah hmm. kind of crazy yeah, yeah. And he swears up and down. He's like, no, I, I totally, I know what I saw. You know, he, he says, I'm not a crazy person or anything. I know what I saw. And I, my story has not changed all these years and stuff. That's so mm. crazy. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's, I mean. I don't know, if I freaking saw story. that, I'd be terrified. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> die, honestly. <laughs> I'd just scream. They'd be like, come yeah. get me. <laughs> Well, you don't want to tell us to come get you. Come cause... get me. <laughs> maybe I do. <laughs> maybe, maybe you do. No. I mean, if uh, you're gonna do that thing, you know, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> come kill me, please. <laughs> Apparently, there's like a bunch of like dog man st- uh, stories on like YouTube of people that are sharing their stories of mm-hmm. like their encounters with dog men. One yeah. guy said that uh, it, it one smiled at him, like they can actually be talked to. What? Um, Oh, like, wow. Yeah, they, some of them said that they could talk, be talked to, or whatever, and that they like. One of them smiled at him, and then one guy said he shot one, and it bled, 
and like cried out in pain but like mm-hmm. he didn't die and the the mm. there's like a general like consensus that they can be hurt but it's like almost impossible to like kill them so like what is the dog man is the dog man technically a werewolf or is it like because like when i think werewolves i think of like you know a person that obviously turns into you know a beast or whatever right but it's like a dog man like something that is like like just a dog being that is like bipedal and can like well and i think well that's smarter yeah i think there's like a difference because so there's like werewolves which are people that are you know turning <laughs> wolves because of some external sim- stimuli there's lichens which are people that are like human animal hybrids that can turn into right. both and then mm-hmm. i think dogmen are like a hybrid but they exist as like i think one like, right. species right. at a time yeah like they have like you know human characteristics or traits dogman is very dog. very much its own thing in a lot yeah. of ways and stuff yeah yeah so interesting so, I, it's, I think it's really interesting some of these uh like sightings um like the first one was 1887 by uh it was two lumberjacks saw a creature they described as having a man's body and a dog's head and then in 1938 in paris michigan robert forney was attacked by five wild dogs and said that one of the five walked on two legs reports of similar creatures also came from allegan county in the 1950s and in manistee and cross village in 1967 yeah and that seems about you know like some of the areas that we talked about where this thing might have been seen you mean when i talked about it earlier in this yeah. episode yeah exactly <laughs> well no i'm just, just saying that it connects you just read the very thing that i read verbatim <laughs> earlier oh, i didn't hear you do that in this episode <laughs> but I, I literally read it verbatim the entire thing section there that you just read so our listeners just heard the same thing twice and ben just treated it like it was a new fact yeah <laughs> it's maybe just, and to maybe me, to me it is new mike maybe nobody would have caught it then maybe nobody but i'm did. not gonna let you get away with it i'm not gonna let our listeners get the same story twice without Why saying that? something heard that but <laughs> yeah so a lot of people think it's a hoax but a lot of people also think it's real yeah exactly and i just want you to know that there's a comment on this cryptids.fandom.com wiki that says dogman is so hot where can i find him nope that's weird um so i got a story right here this is actually posted about five days ago about a dog man the lady said oh. that um this guy's wife she was telling him a story um when she was younger she had a therapist she saw regularly. He was a former MD in the Navy. He was an efficient and ended up marrying him and his wife together later. Anyways, he told her a story about how he was in Georgia. Um, and they had gotten a cabin out in Georgia, like, like a vacation cabin that was kind of out in the woods. Yeah. Um, so they're away from everybody. Um, and she said that like in the middle of the night, she woke up the guy's wife woke up in the middle of the night like feeling an intense sense of dread and then and she like woke up her husband so they went downstairs and they looked out the window and they saw a creature staring back at them that appeared to be a bipedal canine and he's, he's, they weren't harmed but they were freaked out by it and it was like watching them and apparently like that's like that was all that happened was that they huh. saw it outside and what it looked like and then it like <laughs> went off but um like that's that's like another common thing is it's usually about like really in, like intensely wooded areas yeah i mean where yep. some of the stories are of the dog man like in manistee and some of those areas you there's literally stretches miles and miles and miles of woods yeah that you could live in and that that you like there's no towns or anything around so well you have to either go there to hunt or yeah and that's very interesting because the very first uh recorded sighting of a dog man from the two lumberjacks back in 1887 was from them doing lumber on the manistee river yeah yep. so yeah um there's uh there's actually someone who is like a like a i don't know what you'd call her like a werewolf like researcher or something a cryptozoologist um, uh, sort of, but she specializes in like wolf men and werewolf mm-hmm. sightings and stuff. So she um, she says that most of the reports that come to her from people who claim that they see dogmen or whatever from Michigan happen to be from um, these like um, 
Native American burial mounds and stuff. Yeah. And um, so they're like mounds that are like, they actually make their mounds like shaped like animals sometimes and stuff. But, um, but they're, so there's like apparently lots of reports that are coming from these burial mounds and stuff or kind of in the same area as these burial mounds. So like one of her theories is that like the dog man um, is like a, a creature that had some sort of connection with the native Americans and stuff. It's kind of like a spirit guardian type of thing or something. And yeah. would like protect these these sacred areas and stuff, so so that's her theory. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah, that's crazy. Well, it was interesting. Um, one of the things I was just reading is that like that intense feeling of dread that those people felt. Yeah, that like yeah. there's a consistent like thing across all the different stories. Is yeah, that all of them felt that way. And yep. somebody used like the the idea or the the theory that they're using uh, what's called infrasound. Yeah. Um which I don't know a whole lot about infrasound. I'm sure like some of our listeners do, especially if you specifically seek out ours. Um, it's apparently a, a sound below the frequency of 20 hertz. It's mm -hmm. clearly audible, the hearing threshold having been measured, but um, apparently can have an effect on like the human body. Mm -hmm. um, and Jeez. like, so a lot of people say that what happens is when they run into it, um, that it actually like freezes them up. Uh, psychologist Richard Wiseman said that the odd sensation of people attribute to ghosts may be caused by infrasonic vibrations. Mm. Um, and so there's almost like a wonder, like that's kind of interesting even that yeah. there's a consistent, like maybe it's, you know, I mean, from one side of the aspect, because we're always looking at it from the one side, like it could be real. It may not be real. Right. But right. if it is real, is it that the infrasonic vibrations are places where like supernatural things occur because right. they almost are attracted to it maybe that's like because the barrier between like natural and supernatural is really thin or something but right. like the fact that a lot of people have said that when they've encountered something like a dog man yeah they, first of all they felt like an intense feeling dread and dread, stuff dread, yeah and right like mm. we're paralyzed by it and stuff um, well that's very interesting because if you kind of pull back even further you can kind of see that there's like not just like wolf i mean you can look at like even in egyptian mythology and stuff where there's like the anubis and stuff which is like the dog-headed um person or whatever and stuff yeah. and uh so they have a lot of that in uh, egyptian mythology there's a lot of stuff in like greek mythology where there's like you know you know you have like the minotaur which is like a, a bull-headed creature and stuff as well and they're like a three-headed dog too in, in some yeah. mythology cerberus yeah. cerberus yeah yeah, yeah. but specifically talking about like human slash creature hybrid mm, type stuff right. there's uh there's a lot of that in all sorts of different mythologies and stuff like uh you know there's like uh in like norse mythology there's you know well not necessarily norse mythology but like when like the the vikings would come they would wear like bear skin sometimes and stuff and so there's like people that were like being raided by them who thought that they were like these like man part man part beast type things and stuff and so there's all that type of stuff going on but it's very interesting because there's this phrase that's used by the the navajos in regards to this uh they call them skinwalkers and stuff basically people that can take oh, yeah. on the shape of an animal and stuff so but I, i'm i'm gonna be totally real like i like talking about werewolves and stuff skinwalkers freak me the fuck out. <laughs> like they really do like yeah when you start getting into skinwalker stuff dude it freaks me out well I'm, i have a very interesting story to tell about that too oh personal snap. story um well, listen, we but, should take a second because no you know you've teased me with two stories josiah well i told you one of them already the dogman one but well, from yeah. my friend but i just i just want to finish my point here i think okay. that it's very interesting that you know this whole idea of like these supernatural ties to dogmen and, and werewolves and stuff like that, and like that sense of dread and stuff and how that could be like a supernatural thing that's going mm -hmm. all the way back to like, you know, if you are a Christian who believes in the Bible and stuff to the beginning of time or to the beginning of like creation and stuff where you have like Satan taking on the, the, the skinwalker appearance of like a snake and stuff, you know, and some of that type of stuff. So you know, yeah. if it if it began all the way back then with you know demonic shit, <laughs> who knows? Like, why not now? Right? Happened throughout yeah. throughout history and stuff. I that yeah. type of stuff. 
So like, I, I was curious though, since you were talking about like body, but I mean, a human animal hybrids, right? Yeah. Like where, where do you think like the inspiration for things like fawns and uh, centaurs and things like that came from? That's a really good question. Do yeah. you think those things came from just imagination or do you think those things came from things that people thought they saw? Well, I think it's very common in most mythologies to have some sort of human animal hybrid. Well, right. Stuff. It's, it's it's common amongst all mythology, like Hinduism, Egyptian, Greek, Hindu, whatever. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that there's definitely a possibility that, you know, maybe in the the ancient world or something like that, there might have been some weird, weird shit going on <laughs> where there's like crazy, I don't know. I don't know exactly how what it would have looked like or what it could have been, but maybe some sort of weird animal human stuff going on or something like that or um who knows i mean you know it, i think yeah. that there's definitely a possibility of something like that going on so yeah. and it's this exact reason why josiah and i want to see lamb <laughs> yeah, exactly i mean yeah. there are paintings but, from the 1500s of fawns i mean mm -hmm. right the 15 freaking hundreds yeah you know i mean in, in ancient roman times they used to talk about them all the time of this yeah. like human goat yeah. hybrid that is like nature loving and you know yeah. and stuff like that i just well, think it's interesting you get like, the, like weirder stuff like uh, baphomet yeah um you know which is a deity religiously worshiped by the knights templar who has like a goat head yep you know yep. yeah then you have yeah like i said like the minotaur and stuff you know uh, yeah his name but is isn't it interesting how these but, creatures were considered like immediately thought of as deities yeah 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 like every yeah. single time you find a human animal hybrid it's almost always worshipped yeah uh, that's I mean, whatever I culture or or mythology whatever it is that's almost yeah. like one of the key things that kind of connects them all it's like almost always like worshipped or given some sort of reverence right uh, compared to, to other things i, I, I think that's be, interesting i wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of like dark supernatural connection with a lot yeah. of that stuff so, right yeah. um, why are goats considered demonic a lot of the time yeah, yeah i feel like they are but <laughs> yeah. probably because goats actually are filled with <laughs> the devil <laughs> yes goats are are just evil spirits <laughs> but even in greek mythology there's like um i believe that there's a like a story about some sort of werewolf type thing and stuff if i'm not mistaken like is that where the the phrase like uh lichen comes from and stuff is from is like mythology from greek? i think I so um, let's look it up. Yeah, but, it up. but yeah i think that there's like something to do with like zeus or something where he basically cursed someone to become like uh, a wolf or something if I'm not mm. mistaken, in Greek mythology. Gotcha. Um, so I know that there's like something, I believe there's something like that in Greek mythology. Um, there's like uh, the, there's like a werewolf in the Epic of Gilgamesh and stuff as well. Or uh, someone was turned into a wolf and stuff in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Spell like it. L-Y-C-A-N. Um, and then in, in Norse mythology as well, in the, um, the saga of the, the Volsungs, um, there's a father and son who discovered like uh, wolf pelts that had the power to like turn people into wolves for uh, 10, 10 days. Um, and so like the, the father and son like donned these like pelts and stuff and transformed into wolves and went on like a killing rampage in the forest and stuff. So a so. lichen's origin was Greek folklore's. Its nature of transformation is voluntary. Its time of transformation is any time, and its appearance is that of a full-fledged wolf of gigantic size. Hmm. Whereas, like sure. werewolves, are come from Old English folklore. Their nature of transformation is involuntary. It happens on a full moon night, and it's a wolf standing on two legs. Right. Mm. Right. Yeah. There's a uh, the well, part of the interesting. You mentioned skinwalkers or whatever. Um, the weird thing too with that is like specifically. Where how they differ to even from dogmen or werewolves is that mm -hmm. like apparently um one of their like tricks or whatever they're almost like sirens in that like they'll look like they'll take on a human form and they'll like cry out for help and so basically like mm -hmm. what they'll do is they'll like you'll hear somebody screaming for help and then when you go mm -hmm. out there like there's nobody and then you get eaten and whatever and they take your form Freaking, or whatever. okay mm -hmm. i don't want to i don't want to spoil alert right now for annihilation 
I just wanted that. I wanted to mention that because this kind of reminds me of that mm-hmm. in some ways. The movie Annihilation. But the movie Annihilation, right? If you haven't seen it with Natalie Portman and you like anything weird, kind of like the stuff we talk about, watch that movie. It's really good. That movie's freaky as crap. It's freaking. This is creepy. like a minor spoiler in this movie. This is even like the big twist. But it's so. a it is a freaking scary scene. And I told Josiah when I left the theater, I'd never been so scared watching a movie scene in my entire life because <laughs> yeah, it was it was that. legitimately terrifying to me. And, but that whole idea of like the, the like bear thing, that's like not like a bear, but also is a bear, but it has like absorbed the like woman's soul and stuff. And it's like, yeah, screaming, yeah. using her calls to like lure in her friends and stuff is really, really freaky. But it reminds me of that. What but Mike was just talking about. Or was yeah. it you? I don't remember where, no, yeah, like, of like the whole siren idea of like luring people in with, with like cries for help or something that, that just, that's the image I got right away. But that's, that's another thing where it's almost like a weird animal human hybrid. Yeah. Thing. Yep, exactly. That, yeah. that same idea, yep. you mm-hmm. know? And I think they, they probably drew a lot of inspiration from things like that, but it's legitimately terrifying. The movie is yep. so good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. Well, I mean, even the term like berserkers and stuff from Norse mythology or from like uh, Nor- the Norse language and stuff, like that means like bear skin, basically, or mm-hmm. bear shirt. So basically, it's like people who had like bear clothes and stuff that they wore and stuff, right? Which uh, is something that they used to do a lot and stuff. Um, and even freaking Tolkien wrote about, you know, Bayorn, who's. Yeah, a giant yeah. who can who's a man who can who's giant who can turn into yeah. a giant bear, right? Yeah, you know yeah. it's just interesting because like this, these type of creatures have been influential through, mm-hmm. you know, all yeah. of history, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did you um did you guys ever hear of these uh about the werewolves of Ossery, which is like uh like something from Ireland actually? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I feel like that that sounds familiar. So um. So sometime in the late 1100s, a priest traveling from Ulster to Munster came across a man and his wife forced to live for seven years as werewolves. They were good Christian people and true believers whose ancestors had been cursed for a long forgotten sin by another priest in the time just after St. Patrick. They were not evil nor killed other humans. These people in their clan were known as the werewolves of Ossery. And you can read more about them and stuff, obviously, but there's like, um, so there's there's that whole story too, where there's a lot of stuff actually from Ireland that has to do with werewolves. But uh, mm-hmm. there's even like art and stuff from like the 1200s of this priest basically hanging out with these like weird human dog things and stuff <laughs> like there's so little weird. Art, art out there about about it and stuff um yeah. so so yeah it's it's kind of kind of crazy um it's crazy um i actually just found a story about uh what was it paul palmyra werewolves um this is like a story about these five like a family in i can't remember that how, palmyra maine they were apparently attacked hmm. by like five like wolf-like creatures mm. i haven't listened to the full story yet mm-hmm. but yeah apparently they were like um they're like a group of people that were they saw like a creature running towards them and they ran into like their cabin they had a group of people with them and they like barricaded the doors and stuff and like were in this house all night and these things were like scratching at the roof and like banging on walls and stuff trying to get inside the house all night mm. um, yeah and that's like apparently like a really popular story amongst like werewolf people that they don't really have like a specific um like story for or like an mm-hmm. answer for yeah yeah yep. yeah and i've i've said like a lot of times here on the show that one of the things that i love to do is look for things that are grounded in like actual things that happen or history or reality and stuff that people get the ideas for these different creatures from and stuff right and one of the things that i i think i've mentioned it before in a couple of episodes um when we've kind of mentioned werewolves briefly and stuff but like one of the things that a lot of people think that the idea of werewolves came from as kind of like the the werewolf that we know of today and stuff in a lot of ways is that um warriors in ancient ireland um they were like um basically um people who would kind of like put on these crazy wigs and stuff these long like shaggy wigs and they would put on Hmm. literal like wolf skins 
and it was actually called wolfing like they would say that they would go wolfing when they would go and carry out raids and stuff so in other words it's like furries of today (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. all right (laughs) (laughs) maybe a little bit more hostile and sinister but you know yeah yeah i don't think most same same idea are going out and you know on murdering people in raids but you know i I mean i don't think so i would actually probably have more respect for them these days if they actually do that (laughs) but uh (laughs) but that's so that's like uh, i i think that that there's a possibility that could be a one of the origins of where we get the idea of werewolves and stuff today, even whether it's, you know, connected with like a supernatural thing or not. Um, that's definitely something that's probably a little bit more grounded in what, what is realism and stuff as far as like the actual right. folklore idea of the werewolf and stuff. So, but who knows, you know, um, yeah. I think that there's def- definitely that as a possibility. I think that there's, there could be some sort of, like dark supernatural connection to it too and stuff so i think there's a dark yeah. supernatural connection to a lot of things yeah, yeah. but i don't know i'm well, especially from the ancient world i think that right. especially like back you know thousands and thousands of years ago there's a lot of crazy shit that happened right <laughs> we probably like if we saw something like that happen today we'd freak out we'd be like what the heck yeah but, no, absolutely. i mean some of that is still even happening today like right. yeah. if you go to some of these countries like um India and stuff, like there's a lot of Hinduism type stuff that, that happens over there that is freaky as shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like my dad, he he was over in India and um he was I don't remember which of the the gods it was, but they basically had like in this kind of like courtyard area, this sacred area where they had like the statue of one of their gods and stuff and People would bring all sorts of like vegetables and fruits and even like some as offerings like as offerings and they just leave it there. And there was like, um, like my dad said, my dad is someone who does not get into conspiracy theory type stuff at all. But he said that even when he was walking past it, he heard like these weird like whispering voices coming yeah. from like the statue and stuff. It's crazy. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's you know, there's something interesting too because um you know we don't sometimes we don't realize even fully like as people like even our own ability to like affect the world around us and stuff and like mm-hmm. the power of belief is like a really big thing for a lot of people you know it's like if you believe something then like you know manifesting things and i'm like there's like a smaller application to it with like you know oh you believe good things are going to come your way and you'll see positivity in your life or whatever but imagine like you know a group of people that believe something so strongly that like it starts to manifest in a way in the world because you only see it a specific way Mm -hmm. um and like part of that i thought this was really interesting because i i was reading i'm always reading new stories trying to find more stuff to talk about in um this gets more into windigo which isn't the same thing but it's kind of an interesting idea there was a guy back in like the 1800s I believe it was that believed so strongly that the Wendigo were real. And this was apparently the Wendigo that we know of is different than the Wendigo from like Native American folklore and stuff that like that story's changed over time because of just people and the way like the telephone effect, like the story went from this to being this. But mm-hmm. this guy believed so strongly that Wendigos existed that he had 18 confirmed Wendigo kills. Jeez. He had like a whole team of people. But the thing is, the guy was like, the thing is about this is they weren't Wendigo kills. He had 18 confirmed murders that he mm-hmm. believed were people that were Wendigo. Right, right. And so like in his last victim was a late, an older woman who like people said was acting weird or strangely and he believed she was a Wendigo. Man. And they were saying that like the power of belief manifested this guy believing with this group of people that he was with that he was really hunting wendigo and i think and, you know it well the yeah. weird thing is like if they're real then like he did everybody a favor but like the mo- the world will never see somebody killing wendigo but if not unless- he just murdered people yeah they- yeah they're gonna see him as crazy because yeah the thing is unless you know, like there's this there's this concept in uh, the werewolf game that I was got t- mentioning to you guys. It's called the delirium. Is it the delirium? Yeah, I think it's delirium. Where basically, like the brain in the in that universe, like if a human being sees a werewolf, they'll go catatonic 
and right. like freak out and their brain will rationalize that they could not have seen what they saw and like even in the setting if you show somebody like a video of a werewolf they'll rationalize it as either being cgi or being a bear or something so like the con the idea is that as humans we don't want to be unsettled by real believing in a world where something like a real werewolf could exist right and so we'll right. like right justify it by any degree that we can so what are we gonna well, say I was going to say that, um, I mean, your, your brain is super powerful. I know we talked about this, like it's the most powerful muscle in your body, right? We talked about this a few weeks ago. Um, but like with the guy killing, killing Wendigos, like even the power of belief, I think comes from that. Like your brain can trick you into doing a lot of things, mm -hmm. which is the scariest part. Like your brain can literally like, like you can almost physically make yourself sick by just believing that you were sick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like you can yeah. cause physical effects on your own body because of how strongly you believe something is actually happening. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's the same idea with this guy who, you know, murdered, you know, a bunch of different people because he believed so strongly. And in his mind, he convinced himself that yeah. they were when to go, yeah. even if they ne necessarily weren't. Um, right. So it's right. just, I think that's interesting. And even with what Mike was just saying before, I think that all, ties absolutely. in there as well like absolutely yeah yep no i 100 percent. it's yeah it's it's that power of belief and the guy was this one guy was warning he was like you know that guy believed what he believed about wendigo but we have like this new legend in this new interpretation of wendigo and we don't realize as as a people we could be manifesting the next wendigo hunter because the wendigo become real to to a person you know it's kind of similar to what happened with slender man yeah and What's weird is that we think Slender Man is ridiculous and silly and, and dumb and not existing because we know it's a game and stuff, but there's like obviously roots to other legends about other creatures yes. and stuff. But then you those think ideas about come the from somewhere. That, like, yeah. But you think about the fact that you know what? In like 50 years, maybe even a hundred years or something, Slender Man might not seem that ridiculous to somebody. That yeah. might be something where they're like, no, no, I saw something like Slender Man, you know? Yeah. Like, and because we don't realize the effect we have on the world, if we live in a simulation, then it would make sense that if enough people believe in something, that it'll eventually come to pass, you know? Yeah. And if we don't live in a simulation, but we live in a world where the strength of belief and collective belief and the collective idea of something could bring something to light, maybe it doesn't create an actual Slender Man, but it creates it enough that enough minds believe right. it's real to see something that's not there, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've even, it was crazy too, is like, um, I remember hearing a story about this, this girl who she had like a really bad, like autoimmune disease. And one of the things that's the side effect of her autoimmune disease, if she got like, if her diet got bad enough for like her, yeah, her diet affected her bad enough is that she would sometimes see things that weren't there. Like sometimes she would see like creatures or like things like morph into creatures. Or like one time her brother's face contorted into something like that looked like a monster. So she believed she was seeing something. So sometimes even like, you know, we it could be a situation where maybe an entire village or an entire like area of people have a deficiency in their diet enough that like if there's a consistent idea that they're like seeing behind something, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, where these people are manifesting, like, the Michigan dog man could have been a bear, like Ben said, but maybe there's enough people that are eating and have the same enough, similar enough diet that they perceive the world slightly differently than everybody else does. And so in this area, this thing is a legend because of, of that the, reason. you know, because of the, yeah, because of the collective minds of everybody. Yeah. Around. Well, right. and like your yeah. eyes, once again, like your brain, your eyes can also play tricks on you yeah um like you can see something that i mean people see things that aren't there people also see things differently than how they actually appear because they're i mean i think that like your brain really can like cause that many different things to happen which is i mean kind of like what you were saying um yeah. but yeah i mean i don't know like is that like the same ideas like you know the people in the congo that say they've seen a dinosaur like you know that same idea right right um you know like obviously none of these things have ever been captured on film or camera obviously it's it, it'd be hard to do out there because it's you know there's not not any technology out there really but yeah. um you know it's still it's still that same idea mm -hmm. of yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people say they see it but 
well, what does I, that yeah. mean? I think that know? there's grains of truths to a lot of things. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's just kind of like figuring out what is that, that grain of truth and what is, you know, what is the, the imagination around it or whatever else, you know? Yeah. So like, well, there's like that, um, that whole thing of what came first, like the chicken or the egg. And like, there's all the conversation about, well, why is all the video footage of anything supernatural really blurry and bad and crappy? Mm -hmm. And like the question, what if the question isn't like, why does it all look bad? The question is maybe why does it always look bad to us? Like right. maybe, mm -hmm. you know, somebody else might see it and believe it's a real thing and the quality doesn't matter. But for everybody else, the quality has to matter because if it's not in crystal clear 4K, they wouldn't believe it. But if they saw it in crystal 4K, they still might not believe it. Maybe, right. They yeah. still would think it's photoshopped or. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because exactly. sometimes it's, it's, it's more about the belief than it actually is about the thing itself. You know, they would do yeah. everything in their like their brain would make every single excuse it could to make them yeah. believe that it doesn't it's not yeah. real absolutely well, yeah like, and go ahead i was just gonna say and uh, i think that like you know the grain of truth in a lot of these things you know it could vary in size too as well you know yep. like it can be right. very small or it could be very large and um absolutely. so it, i mean it's sometimes it's hard to know exactly how big it is but i think yeah. it kind of it's almost like tall tales you know how like when a tale gets told enough times it changes in its shape yeah. And it yeah. changes in yeah. its story. The story eventually changes and morphs over time. Yeah. It's also like that. Like yeah, a lot of these totally. stories could have changed until now. Eventually, like these guys saw like a bear cub, but now eventually it has morphed into a dog man. Right. Yep. You know, like yeah. that, that also is a possibility. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Absolutely. like uh, Johnny Appleseed is actually based on a, an actual person who yeah. like actually planted apples. But then the story continued to change until he was like an animal talking guy who right. could just magically make apple trees sprout up from the ground and stuff. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yep. So it's very yeah. interesting how that morphs over time and stuff. So. Yeah. But like that's how legends are made, I think, in a lot yeah. of ways. Yeah. I mean, even with uh, like I talked about like the berserkers from uh, Norse uh, history and stuff, but there was also another group of people from um the viking times who were called the ulf hednar which were basically kind of similar to berserkers but they were specifically people who were did wolf things wow. like they hmm. actually did wolf things like they would um they would actually wear wolf skins and stuff um but they would also paint their skin black hmm. they would completely paint themselves black and they would wear wolf skins and they would actually howl at the moon, like the moon and stuff and they would like travel in packs wow. and they would do all these like really weird crazy things like that and so like they would actually do this when they would come over sometimes into like uh great britain and stuff and so that's possibly so once again another area where the werewolf legend hardcore furries yeah, yeah is what i'm hearing furries, yeah yeah yep. yeah so it's just it's just really crazy yeah. and you know it's very easy you know especially if you're talking about like medieval times where you know if somebody sees like something like that in the medieval times then then they don't know exactly what to do with that they're going to create some sort of story out of it or something and a perfect episode name for this podcast the werewolf furry connection <laughs> nope nope we're not doing that one <laughs> nope absolutely not maybe we should just become furries and travel no in packs. that's not a normal, that's not a normal thing for people to come to that's not a normal conclusion listen maybe this guy really there wants to be a wolf is so many things like guys i had like 12 tabs open of just stories like historical yeah. accounts to like eyewitness accounts all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. like i don't think this is the end of this no, we'll probably do, I'd totally do another episode on some of the stuff, especially right. just like Skinwalker. Like I, I literally have yeah, I wanna, a very interesting. I still want to hear your Skinwalker story. Um, I don't know if we have time. Yeah, we'll save it. We need to save it. Yeah, we'll save it as a teaser. Maybe I should uh, see because this story is actually a story. My okay, so just to give a little bit of backstory, my dad used to live in New Mexico, and he was very involved with um, Navajo um communities and stuff down there um he would like uh he was like a teacher down there and some of that type of stuff and um so he he's he was very connected with a lot of the navajo ideas and traditions and stuff mm -hmm. down there and that's where skinwalkers originated 
in a lot of ways was from the Navajo tribes and stuff, Navajo culture. And he has a very interesting story of when he accidentally stumbled into a sacred Navajo area that I would definitely like to talk about. So maybe, maybe we'll save that for our next episode where we kind of nice. talk about skin changers and stuff. We got so much coming at you this month about spooky spooks spooky 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 season you guys are gonna love this stuff it's and furry good. stuff yeah and lots of lots of furry stuff know. lots of furry stuff nope, just i and i were on the same page we said don't, it at the same time don't listen to them that we're not going to talk about furries um, you don't know that no no we're not going to do it we're not going to do that we're gonna, we're gonna i want to be i want to be a bear furry no, let's not do that. You know what? In the episode, I thought you wanted to be a wolf first. Just in the episode, no, I'm more of a bear guy than a wolf guy. No, I heard that. Let's not do this. This not. And this is not a thing. This want. is making Mike <laughs> uncomfortable, and I love it. It's making everyone uncomfortable. Dan. I'm more concerned about our audience right now than anybody. <laughs> That's okay. They probably like it. No, Ben. <laughs> they probably do. Deep in no. deep inside. Nope. Dude, our audience is just as twisted. Don't talk inside. about furries and being deep inside. Our audience in is just sentence. as twisted as us, Mike. No, and they're not. That's they why they listen be. to us. They look at these three buffoons and how <laughs> off the rabbit trail they've become. Look how deep it's like fallen. going to a circus. You know, you go there to watch yeah. weird people. So, yeah. like, <laughs> that's what we are. Be um, circus. Lady. So with that being said, that is going to be our episode for this week. I hope that you guys enjoyed um, all of our crazy werewolf talks and everything else. We have a lot more coming at you, like Mike said. Lots of creepy stuff for this month of October. So hope you guys enjoy and look forward to those. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and leave a comment. And if you're listening to us on your favorite audio podcast platform, please leave a review. We'd appreciate that a lot. And share with your friends as well. So hope you guys enjoyed and we will talk to you you all next week. Bye. Bye.